Hello there. So I'm just taking a stroll through the community orchard. And there's one apple tree that's still got apples on it. Here at the Byers in Sidmouth. And I received a message today which I realise is a great subject for a film. So it's diet. Diet, diet, diet. I don't know if you noticed, but there's just so much information about diets these days. And they all say pretty much the same thing. No matter what the type of the diet, the diet says, this is the answer. Just do this and everything will be fine. In fact, I did this and I've never been healthier. And I think that sums up pretty much every single yeah. diet that there is out there that you might get to hear about. I do have a slightly different perspective on diets from most people, primarily because I've been researching health and nutrition for an astonishingly 57 years, hard to believe, but that's how long it is I've been doing this. And we'll just take a little pause here just to take in this lovely wildflower meadow. It may be creeping towards the end of September, there's a lot of lovely flowers in there. And this is by way of me welcoming you to one of my picking grounds for rosehips. Okay, so I'm just going to get a little bit closer. There we are, the butterflies. Lovely variety of colours. All very beautiful. So, I've also trained as a health counsellor and practice as such as well as a shamanic practitioner as I'm sure you know. So let's demystify this subject about diet, bearing in mind that every single one out there tells you this is the answer. It leaves you, the interested person with a WTF situation, what on earth I make of all this? So let me break it down for you. The first thing I'd like you to realise is that people that are really gung-ho about a particular diet who swear it's the answer and everyone ought to do it, they're telling you rather more about themselves than they are about the diet. Now, this is a bush I've almost completely picked clean. These are a few orange ones I'm leaving to ripen off a little bit longer. Give them another five to seven days. And this is when I've done a lot of picking on. There's a few that I can't reach at the back there. So. Let's take some extreme examples. You've got the carnivore diet and the vegan diet. So one says, eat all animal food. That's it, fish, meat, dairy, nothing else. And you've got the vegan that say, eat everything that that man told you not to eat. In other words, just vegetables, plants. Well, What's a person to do? Obvious question, isn't it? So, let me go into a little bit more detail about this remark I made about how when you find someone extolling the virtues of a diet, it tells you rather more about them than it does about the diet. Let's see if I can explain that in a bit more detail. So, this is a bush that I was picking maybe 10 days ago and there's a whole bunch which have ripened off sufficiently for me to start picking some more of. So. I'll be working this one and this is one I've picked very extensively as well but there's a few more that have ripened up so I'll have to go squeezing around the back of this particular bush in amongst the vegetation to get those and of course rosehips well best source of vitamin C on the planet because they contain bioflavonoids that's a lovely orangey reddy colour from the rosehip vitamin C wonderful antioxidant Personally, I don't care which diet you do, if you're getting yourself some good antioxidants, that's got to be a step in the right direction. Okay, so this is what I mean. When I was doing my health counsellors course, we heard about people who suddenly stopped eating salt. And it seems like a strange thing to do, because we all know salt is essential for life. So how can a person stop eating salt, but even more amazingly, swear that they are doing so much better and they're just fantastic? Well, if that person in question had been eating a very high meat and animal food diet, when they were to actually 
stop doing that and go on to let's say more of a a medium a bit of everything type diet if they were to cut out the salt they would be absolutely fine because all the animal food they've been eating all that time would have dosed their body up with an excess of salt which would have taken well over a year to actually use up but go to see that same person in five years time and if they're still not eating salt they're probably as weak as a kitten and incapable of doing very much and probably finding all sorts of justifications and reasons and excuses about oh it's absolutely nothing wrong with the diet you know it's just this it's just that so here's the point I'm attempting to illustrate if you stick to a what people call a well-rounded mixture of plants and animal foods and you're making sure you don't eat much if any of refined sugar you're going to do fine for a long time but if you find yourself being attracted very strongly to a diet which to other people might seem a bit extreme there's probably very good reason for it so for example let me take my own case working hosting plant medicine retreats for 10 years doing a lot of retreats and needing to follow the plant diet before each one and after each one and not being much of a gap in the middle what i did is i basically became eventually severely deficient in salt and i became lacking in energy became weak so that's an example of slipping out of balance and i was doing it for another purpose other than my personal health i was doing it for the calling i was involved with so that's an example now i can remember a really salient moment when i brought by a couple of guys to my house after retreat and they were catching the plane to ireland the following day and they stayed over and they were really shocked and surprised to see and here we are just having a check at the blackberry situation small but still lovely wonderful and so they were surprised to discover that the dinner i cooked was basically lamb's liver onions with a lot of spices in and boiled potatoes and i'd reached the point by that stage when my body was just saying oi we don't care what you think is a good idea we want you to get with the program and remember to listen to us the hundreds of billions of cells in your body and the far more than that number a mathematically huge number of microbes that make up the microbiome all that were, lot were screaming in me and said now liver onions potatoes and so i did so one of the lessons i learned is it's a really good idea to obey the body so if you find yourself maybe you've been eating a lot of meat products for years and you suddenly find yourself going vegan it could just be that your body has actually had enough of that kind of food could be and if you've been eating a vegan diet for a long time you suddenly feel an unbearably huge craving to eat animal food and pretty much nothing else that's probably because your body's telling you that that's what you need to do so ultimately i would regard your body to be the final arbiter of what is right for you i would definitely not listen to the mind the mind i would say is the worst possible source and it's ironic isn't it because most people get their information on diets through youtube and other sources which is engaging the mind perhaps the most unreliable source when it comes to what's good for the body the mind's got all sorts of agendas and it's not really tuned into the body unless you are very fortunate and i'm just taking in the beauty of these rowan berries i know that rowan berries contain tannins i know they're also rich in antioxidants i have not researched and worked with these yet because i'm so in love with the rose sip but i'm aware there are possibilities which i could investigate in the future so i will give you my own opinion and i'll just look at this because just by my feet the very embodiment and representation of eternity and beauty it's an apple uh, nature dropping it at my feet so thank you very much nature for that lovely gift so let's just take this a little bit further then this whole subject 
if you've been experiencing a period of time whereby you are lacking certain nutrients you're going to be attracted to those foods which are going to be rich in them so a very extensive period of a meat diet then you're going to be attracted to more of a vegetarian thing which sums up my own case because I used to get meat three times a day that's what I was brought up with and by the time I was 19 my body just got to the point of enough already and so I made the shift from the conventional meat diet to the vegetarian diet I never did make the shift from the vegetarian diet to the vegan diet I've chosen instead to go for the plant-based alkaline diet which is what I was doing all that time with the retreats which allowed always the possibility that my rational mind's love of regimes could be overruled by the body like with the lamb's liver and the onions and the potatoes as a very simple example so this is what I want to say to people who are eating a purely vegan diet if it's working for you at the moment that's great if you're eating an entirely carnivorous diet or a 95% carnivorous diet as the message sender revealed today good on you keep it going enjoy it if it's working for you that's fine and here's the rub the rub is don't expect things to stay the same in fact I go even further and it was one of the axioms of my health counselors training everything changes we were told over and over again until it became part of our unconscious meta-programming everything changes and indeed we heard about this famous case of a client who came to a health counselor and he advised a particular dish called Nituke which is where you cook the vegetables with a little bit of oil and you cook them and so they dry the vegetables come out quite dry and that's because what that person needed at that particular time when he came for his consultation when he came back six months later the health counselor was astonished to discover that he'd followed the advice so rigidly he was still eating exactly the same thing that he's advised to eat six months previously and ignored all the other advice about changing and doing this and doing that he was stuck and he got himself into a right mess and in fact he had to stop eating that and go on to eating something else again so be ready to flow with the changes so what's been happening to me in recent times is I've been feeling the real calling to eat more animal food a lot more animal food than I've eaten for many decades and it surprised me and because my body's in charge and my rational mind is very much subservient I'm following the advice and I'm finding eating a lot of the fish especially wild salmon and other white fish and when it comes to the meat particularly wild meat now it's not easy to get hold of but wild male meat is even more preferable there's a disturbing sad fact about the UK which is it's almost all feminized when it comes to the meat products uh, so I was lucky enough to get a little bit of uh, beef from the bull which is what I took into my body and a really small amount and it went a really long way very effective so that's why I'm at now and it explains because of all those years of eating a plant-based alkaline diet meant that I was actually missing out and it was because of what I was choosing to do so on the other hand let's look at the vegan example where a person is doing vegan diet for quite a while when they get to the point of the unbearable craving for meat that's a sign and the other way around eventually people will do these purely animal diets for long enough and they'll get a sudden craving for plants and I do want to mention this because there is something called the ketogenic diet and I've been listening to people close to me and one person particularly I'm thinking of did the ketogenic diet and was everything was working fine um doing pretty well overall but then actually there was a bit of a problem and when it was investigated it turned out the person needed to have their gallbladder removed so that ketogenic diet the combination of the animal food and all that fat actually put the liver under such a strain it was starting to fail to function properly that's certainly something you want to avoid at all costs 
and I do know of people that have done diets without oil. I know someone who suffered permanent liver damage for that, and that was because the person in question was quite a small build. People with small builds like myself and that person, they've got to be extra careful because they don't have the resilience that people with a bigger build have got. So if you're more of a larger build, you can carry on doing something for longer before you might need to make a course correction. If you've got a light build, when you get the signs coming to you, you want the response sooner rather than later, and that will avoid unpleasant things like operations and such like right, that was necessary in the case of the um, gallbladder problem caused by ketogenic diet. So this is the reason. You see, some people will tell you it's the best diet, and they're right for them and all those people who are in a similar physiological condition. But what I'm really counselling you to do, what I'm exhorting you to do, is once you find a diet that's right for you, tell yourself, this is right for me, for now. And I'll remember his words, everything changes. And indeed everything does. And I can see the wisdom and the common sense behind eating some plants and some animals, because you're less likely to go into any really difficult issues in terms of toxicity and significant damage to the body as was for example in the case of the ketogenic one. I do want to say a little bit more about the vegan diet which is that I have a great suspicion of it and it's based on a lot of observation. I can remember encountering a cult and they were definitely into mind control and all sorts of dodgy stuff and they were into their own diet. They didn't call it vegan, but it was. And I noticed how the people were. And I also think about Bhaktivedan Amana, uh, which is the home of the Hare Krishnas. And we know that Hare Krishnas are very keen on their vegan diet with lots of sugar, refined sugar particularly. And I would say that a vegan diet with lots of sugar is a recipe for weakness in the long term and it's also incredibly convenient to the powers that are attempting to prop up the show at the moment because if you can get a lot of people onto vegan diet they're going to be much more compliant much more easy to manage than if they're eating more of a traditionally balanced diet because they're going to get deficiencies l-carnitine springs to mind i know that was one of the things i started to become division in and also this collagen that's the thing that can catch up with a person later on in life so collagen and alcarnitine deficiencies are definitely a possibility with a vegan diet something to be aware of and i just think it's very clever because if you want to control all the people what a superb way of doing it is to create something and make it quite revolutionary and off the wall and different and to actually ridicule it for a few decades and then after you've been ridiculing it for a while then all of a sudden allow all the supermarkets and the mainstream shops to be filled with products to cater that particular dietary predilection it's a clever way to manipulate people so the other thing that's certainly influenced me in recent years is studying career and culture through the TV mostly and a bit of film and they're so concerned about diet there, they really are. They all eat kimchi till it's coming out their ears. And as I'm sure you already know, the thing about kimchi is people eat kimchi end up with amazing skin because it provides all the extras that traditional diets, even the so-called well-balanced diet, miss out on. It's because of all the microbes in the kimchi which supports and nourishes the microbiome. It's a really useful thing to be able to do. But they're constantly asking each other if they've eaten well and checking on each other. That's a very important part of the culture. Did you eat well? And then the other thing is when it comes to certain occasions, certain foods. So if a person is being released from prison, tofu is what they get. If a person's a bit run down, beef is what they get. And different foods for different conditions. Really noticeable. So I think I've come to my meanderings and it's time for me to continue picking my rose hips and say thank you very much for watching and I'd be very interested to hear about your experiences 
with food and with diets, what you find works for you, what you find has not worked for you. And if you'd like to do the usual things to like, um, subscribe, notifications, I can scarcely even be bothered to remember these things, but you know all that kind of stuff, then it'd be nice to hear from you. And if you want to support my channel, then look in the description for the link for PayPal. And yeah, the rose hips are calling. Thank you very much.